How's it everyone? This is Jordan here from Uprint SA. It's a training video on how to use our DTF software. All right, first things first is we're gonna bring in our artwork. I'm gonna click the top left corner here um, and you can then bring in your logo. Click the open button. I'm gonna bring in this Gorilla Print. Double click on that. Um, once you've brought in your logo, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna preview the, the graphic and click on preview all right so you can see this paper size is really big now to change that paper size i'm going to go cancel preview i'm going to go to here and i've got my paper sizes inside here so i've got i've made my own paper sizes so i'm going to click on a4 so let's click on a3 and work on a3 and then we're going to go preview again all right now this is what the page so this is what the ink or the graphic would look like when it comes out of the printer, you can see it's mirrored. Um, so if I click on print options here, I drag this window across. Print options is now I can now change the size of the artwork that you see on the paper there. The size that has come in is 130 millimeters by 176. So I can change that. Let's change that to 280, press okay. And now I've got a nice big graphic. All right, so let's click on print options again. Let's drag that across. All right, so that is a, um, a custom size. So you've got, you've got three different options here. You've got the original document size. That's generally the artwork that you brought in from Photoshop or Illustrator or CorelDRAW, or it's a PNG image you got from the, from the web. Let's click on that. So the original size is 180 millimeters by 242. Um, and that is the original sized document. So I'm gonna press okay. That's what it would look like if you had brought it in at its original size, okay? So I've got the three different options, fit to page and customize. I'm gonna click on fit to page. Let's see what that does. All right, so that expands the logo to its largest size on the print preview page. I'm gonna click on print options again. And I don't wanna, what I want to work on is more, um, so 289 mils is good. I would work on a 289 mils or lower. I wouldn't go, even though you've got 300 millimeter paper, um, I would go slightly smaller just in case your paper is shifted slightly to the side and then, and then it prints off the paper. So I always like to work with about a five to 10 mil gap on each side. So to play it safe, you can even go to 280 mils but 289 should be good, or even 285 should be nice. So lock that ratio, click on lock ratio, and then that will give you a, a proportional image. It's now proportionally right, okay, and we are looking good. Now the last thing we need to do is horizontal center. We select that, and that is centering the graphic in the, uh, horizontally. So it's only moved sideways, uh, it hasn't done a vertical center, it's done a horizontal center. All right, um, once we've got that, you can also then check your different color backgrounds. So if you're going on a white shirt, this is what the artwork is going to look like. If you're going on a black shirt, you can see it's going to conflict the black shirt. So there's two things you can do here. You can remove the black in the artwork so that it, when you print it on a black shirt, it's, it's just your, um, it's just the rest of the colors and no black. Uh, there's there's lots of different options. If you're going on a yellow shirt, you can remove the yellow lines. If you're going on a red shirt, you can move remove the red and the Uprint logo there so that the red shirt pops through. You can be nice and creative. Right, we've now set up print preview. Um, again, just one more thing here is your image is mirrored. So do not mirror your image inside CorelDRAW or Photoshop or Illustrator. It does it for you here automatically. Okay, so you don't need to go and think about that. All right, we've done a print preview. Now we are going to move to print adjustment. Print adjustment is where you change your underbase settings. So I'm going to go to 100% there. Your fuzziness, I'm going to go to 10 here. And your on the fly. So I'm going to use it on the fly. And I'm going to use underbase together so that I can also use a fuzziness. Now fuzziness stands for half tones or gradients. So uh, color fading into another color. I don't think there's any uh, gradients or halftones in this artwork. Um, 
all vector colors here. There's no there's no fading of a color, all solid colors. So I wouldn't need any fuzziness here, so I'm gonna go zero percent. If you had a half turning effect, let's bring in our artwork that does this one. Yes, here we go. This is now a half turning effect. You can see the it's like a yellow going into like an orange color, and then your orange color going into a darker orange color. That is half turning or gradients. I then use a 10% value when I have gradients. If I have no gradients, let me go back to selecting the other graphic. If I have no gradients like this uh, gorilla, then I use 0%. All right, your underbase setting. This refers to the amount of white that's going behind the colors that you see on the screen there. I'm just gonna go zoom to fit. So I right click, I right click to do that and it gives you little options popping up here. Zoom to fit. Um, so your underbase refers to the amount of white that gets laid behind the colors. So generally if I'm printing on a white shirt, I would only need a 30% underbase. I don't want to go high, I don't want to go lower than 30%. Sometimes you see your very light colors require a bit of white behind them for the powder to grab that color and to melt properly together. And then that will give you the correct durability when you print it on a shirt. So you don't want to go lower than 30%. Um, it just helps with uh, adhesion when you transfer the graphic across onto the shirt. 30%. You can play around with the, the underbase settings. There's no exact amount. It's all based on feel. So if you're going on a, a darker shirt than white, so maybe a light pink, a baby blue color, or you know a light red color shirt, you can up that underbase to 60%. Um, and then if you're going onto your more prominent colors, like a like a blue, a darker blue shirt, a darker red shirt, you can up it to 80. Um, I will play around between 80 and 100 if you're going to your darker shirts and that include uh, and black shirts must be 100% under base so black 100% under base every single time don't go lower than that okay resolution this resolution is the amount of white that gets laid down and the colors so your 1400 by 700 is the resolution you would use on average so I would be using this for light comment and dark comment and I would be using the production uh, environment uh, uh, mostly. Now there is two um, sets of environments here. I've got the L1800 environments set up here. I can use both of them uh, if I wanted to. Um, I do prefer production. Uh, it's, it's based on the Epson 1300 um, color profile. I do prefer this one. It does come out with vibrant colors and it does have um, like a 95% accuracy uh, than these ones here, which is your old 1800. So I like to use production. So I select production and I use the resolution of 1400 by 700. Uh, and that will then give you a nice white for, you know, any color shirt. If you're doing solid white graphics, so let's, uh, let me bring in, uh, I can actually move to that alphabet. Let's minimize that, select this. If I'm going onto a black shirt and I want it to just do white writing, so let's right click, zoom to fit. I'm gonna go image. And you've got some, you've got some editing um, capabilities here. So if I select threshold, what it does, it goes to the highest value of that color. So is he, okay, let me go back here. So you can see here, these colors are lighter on the color spectrum. There's your darker colors on the color spectrum. So now I'm gonna go click on threshold. It's gone, even on the red there, you can see the red, the darker red went to black. Black is the highest, darkest color in the color spectrum. On your lighter color spectrum, white is the highest color. So it goes to that value, threshold to that, that value of that color. So now if I wanted to make it all white, I can just, so you go all black that side, I want to make it all white, I go that way. Some of the colors, so if this was originally black, it is difficult to move it back to white, so let's press OK. I'm going to do that again. Okay, so you can't, you can't have a threshold on a color that was originally black. Okay, so you can only have a threshold on your standard colors. The if that was originally black, you cannot move it back to white. You can invert it. 
So you can see there, you can invert the colors like that, but uh, it's not necessary. Okay, so getting back to your um, resolution. If you're doing a solid white color like this onto a shirt, I'd like to go to 1400 by 1400. That just gives you a more prominent white color. It gives you a very bold white color. There's, you know, the background t-shirt's not gonna come through the white. It gives you enough thickness, especially if you're doing writing. Um, so 1400 by 1400 if you're doing white text or white logos like that. Um, let me just go to print preview here so you can have an idea of what it looks like. I'm also gonna unmirror it so you can also see what it looks like. There we go. So if we were going on a black shirt, I'm sorry, if we're going on a black shirt, let's take a look here. You can now see that that white would print exactly where it is and on the shirt and with a 1400 by 1400 resolution, it's gonna give you a nice prominent white. Okay, so you add in your printer, you're gonna go printer name mapping, double click the drop down menu. I'm not connected to my printer at the moment. So um, I haven't selected it. Uh, if you, if once you click this drop down menu, you will see your Epson printer there. And then you select your printer model uh, and you can name anything you want. If your print shop is different, I think you can just name it DTF if you want. Otherwise you can name it, if your print shop is the print room or whatever it's called, name it that. Um, click that and then press your tick sign. Um, all right. We are now ready to print. I've set up my page for printing. I've got my A3 page. I've got my resolution. I've adjusted my print adjustment here, 100%. Um, and one thing, guys, if you want to go back to your original image, you just come back here and you say undo. Or you can go backwards, sorry. You keep going backwards until you get to the original image. And now you can go ahead and print that. Okay, I click print. I select my printer from the drop down menu. Mine is not yet because I have not uh, connected into my printer. I'm busy making this video for you guys. Uh, press OK and then this will pop up. All right, so it says printing error, device is not connected. So it's obviously not connected. Yours will read uh, something slightly different. Um, you can just change your number of copies here. If this is finished, you double click on copies and then you can change that number of copies there. You can also check your price, uh, your um, the cost to print. You can go down here. So the cost to print this logo was eight rand forty five cents, and that's because the resolution is high. That's a full that's a full A three logo. Now I'm going to show you a difference here. Let me go and change this resolution down to that. I'm going to say print, press OK, press that. OK, so total cost, so you can see now, it should change. The ink cost should change a bit more. But the ink cost now is only 3 Rand and compared to being a lot more on the previous print. So you can see how much more white gets laid down in colors. Okay, there you go. The total cost has changed again. There you go. So the actual cost is six rand twenty nine cents for the ink cost. Sorry, I keep changing it. Let me actually bring this up. There we go. That's better. So your actual cost is six rand twenty nine cents uh, for the ink, and your page size DTF is seven rand fifty cents, bringing your total cost to thirteen rand twenty seventy nine cents. So. In dollar value, that's just under a dollar. You're looking at about um, 80 to 90 cents, US cents, dollars. Um, yeah, so that's about 80 or 90 cents in, uh, if you're in the United States. Uh, and you're looking at about a dollar 30 in Australia. Um, Europe to the pound, probably, um, probably about 50 or 60 uh, cents uh, in Europe. So it's not that expensive to use this technology. You can also do a head clean in here. You click on head clean and you select your printer. It will come in and you say run now. You can do a head clean in here. You can do a nozzle check. 
um, and that will give you an idea of what you can do. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much, guys. That is all. Um, let me know if you have any questions. You can comment below or you can contact us on our WhatsApp line. Thank you.